What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VIII. The inauguration ceremony is over. Squall, Zell, and Selfie are now members of Seed, along with Quistis, who has been demoted from her position as an instructor. And our first official mission as members of Seed lies just ahead of us. But first... But first... I can't use the directory to fast travel. That's weird. Usually you can walk up to the directory and uh, travel to each area of the garden. Um, but anyway, before we get on with the main mission, it's still night here in the garden. We're still under curfew. So we're going to head back to Squall's dormitory and get a little rest because we have a long day ahead of us playing cards. <laughs> Got a lot of cards to play tomorrow. Being a gunblade for hire comes second to Triple Triad. Hey, Zell. Oh. Don't want to talk to you yet. Alright, we get our own rooms now, which are just like the old rooms. <laughs> just slightly off to the left a bit. It's right across the hall from the old one. And it looks exactly the same, so why did that detail need to be in there? It didn't. Wait. Oh no, it doesn't look the same as the other one. I was totally wrong. It's a brand new room. And time to rise and shine, we have cards to play. Okay, we're going to Timber, meet by the front gate. Yeah, we'll get around to that eventually. The mission can wait. Because like I said, oh right, another magazine, like I said, being a gunblade for hire, that can wait. That, that, uh, comes second to playing Triple Triad. We have a bunch of rare cards we have to collect. Oh, and there's that theme I love. By the way, before I go on, uh, does anyone happen to speak French fluently? Um, I ask because there is a making of Final Fantasy VIII documentary up on YouTube somewhere. Um but it was never translated into English. Uh, it's entirely in French. Uh, does, would anyone be willing to uh, take a little bit of time and provide maybe a transcript of that? If so, just send me a PM or leave a comment or something. It would be much appreciated. I, uh, I'm trying to mine as many sources as possible for new information. Also, this kid is not playing the card that I want him to. I really want this kid's mini-mog card. I'm um, just gonna have to play him over and over until he... ...gives it to me. That's gonna be a theme for today going forward. Just playing a couple of people over and over and over again until they play a rare card. Uh, have I got myself into a... Nah, I'm fine. Cause he can't flip Ifrit. 7 to 3. Uh, what do I want to grab? I guess the Thrustavis? I think you can, uh, card mod those into windmills, which you can refine into tornadoes? Uh, let's see... I'm winning a bunch of cards off this kid. There... there we go. Got some Minimog. Action going on. Oh, and he's playing it right off the bat. So, Minimog's really weak from the sides, very hard to flip from the top or the bottom. And I made a big mistake. If you play a card adjacent to another card and they have the same stats, nothing happens, you don't flip it. Ooh, am I gonna waste this chance? No, I still have plenty of chances left. Can't flip my Cactar. I decided not to play Ifrit for this one because I was getting paranoid. I was going to wind up losing him in a dumb way. Let's see. I think if I put this Forbidden over here, I should just force the 6 to 4. Yeah. Alright, now I can grab his mini Mog. And we have, I think, one more card that I really want to get here in the garden, and it's over in the cafeteria. But, um, yeah, paranoia. Always, always be vigilant about dumb mistakes screwing you out of, uh, rare cards. Because I don't, for instance, want to go play some games in the cafeteria and wind up losing that mini mog that I just spent so much time winning, and I don't want to lose Ifrit either, so... Head back here and save. Then we'll get on with, uh... battling some of 
Twistus's groupies, her fan club, in the cafeteria because they have uh, the Biggs and Wedge card, but more importantly, they also have Quistus's card. And her card is actually going to become incredibly useful very, very shortly. It's not the kind of card that I'm going to keep around for playing, but, well, you'll get a pretty good image of what I'm going to do with it soon enough. Uh, the Mini Mod card is another one that I didn't win specifically to play with it. Uh, it's going to be good for now since I don't have that many cards to utilize. It's an alright card for playing with. It, more importantly, is used to advance a uh, side quest. So we'll get those two bombs, a Cactar, and of course Mini Mog and Ifrit. Those bomb cards are really, really coming in handy. I'm glad I carded two of those back in the fire cave instead of just the one I was after. They are incredibly useful early game cards. Uh, that's a shitty position for that giant to be in, but we'll f Oops, I kind of meant to put the Minimog there. Ooh, mistake after mistake. Um, that's fine. Hmm. Flip him with Cactar. And that seems like a pretty good place to put Minimog actually dead center. Yeah, okay. That little mistake in the beginning actually did not wind up making any difference at all. In fact, it led to a bigger curb stomp. And take that Glacial Eye. I think I can refine that into some good stuff. All right. Oh man, I've been at this for so long. I think it's been like a half hour without seeing Quistus pop up once. There we go! God, I've been playing so many games of Triple Triad, I think it's actually starting to grow on me. I think I'm hating it a little bit less. Uh, so now, the only thing that I still really hate is I don't like the rule changes, which I finally know how to manipulate, kinda. And I don't like, when you're going after rare cards, how random it is trying to get them to uh, t trying to get your opponent to play them. Either of the two uh, fan club groupies sitting at the table there can play Quistus, but it's been a half hour, and this is the first time I've seen it happen. Um, it's already not a great position. Gotta play Ifrit early on. Oh, oh, I like this. Yeah, I've got this. So we'll play Figs and Wedge over here. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Six to four, that's a win. And I got Quistus. Great. That is going to be a card that is going to help me win a couple of other rare cards coming up. More importantly, it's refined fodder. And what it refines into is something that's incredibly useful. Good, 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 good. I think that's it for the card games for the moment, though. So we can now move on with our mission to Timber. And to progress forward, we will assemble at the front gates of Blom Garden. But, of course, not quite mission time just yet. Uh, we have a couple of more side things to do, but they're a bit more interesting than uh, playing cards. One of those things is, anyway. The other thing that I'm thinking of is actually just playing guards. Oh man, I go through the- I try to go through the wrong gate literally every single time. And we're just waiting for- oh, Zell to show up on it. What? Oh god, what are these called? T-boards? Make me think of something out of reboot. Yeah, T-boards, they're prohibited. God, I always forget that they're super young in this. They're all like, I think, between 15 and 18. You can go around traveling the world murdering people for money, but you can't ride your T-board in the garden. How many times do we have to tell you this, Zell? Scolding him like a child. <laughs> Okay, about our first mission. We're going to Timber. There's a resistance faction that we have to aid. That's about it.
the response to his question, but the owls are still around. Alright. So we know literally nothing about this mission based on that, except we have a contact to meet in Timber, and there's a password that we're going to have to give him. Also, this job is being done for uh, very little money for some reason. Sid just decided to take this one on out of the goodness of his heart. Up, oh, but wait, there's more. It's a cursed item. Uh, it's a magical lamp, which we're going to use momentarily. But first, I am going to go ahead and head outside. I'm going to head over to the beach where we were uh, towards the beginning of the game. I'm going to grind a little bit of AP and fish fins out from the uh, fish on the beach. So we will be back momentarily. Okay, so I refined some fish fins and water magic, which is a pretty good strength junctioning option. Now we're going to use the magic lamp to fight Diablo, who is going to be yet another optional guardian force. Once we beat him, we will capture him, just like a Pokemon. And he is yet another very important guardian force. Ooh, he's doing a lot of damage with those physical hits. Uh, so he's literally the devil. <laughs> Love it. it. Looks like Namora's Batman design, actually. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to chain cast blind on him. It's this one, that one missed. Uh, this is a pretty fun fight. His basic plan of attack is gonna be to use Demi and Gravija on you. Demi is this game's version of gravity. It reduces one character's HP by one quarter of his of the current value, so it can never kill you. Uh, Gravija reduces the whole party's HP to one-fourth, uh, so that also can't kill you. So his plan of attack is generally going to be to reduce your health with Demi and Gravija, and then finish you off with those really hard-hitting physical attacks. Uh, there's a bunch of ways you can tackle this fight. For instance... Oh, time to mash. If you cast Demi on him from your own stock of spells he will cast Kiraga on your party for some reason. I don't know why he's programmed to do that but that's just how it goes. Uh, the trick is that it has to be from your own stock. Do, do, did I hit? Oh, that was three. Uh, I wasn't paying attention to which ones were crits or not. Uh, so if you draw, cast Demi on the same turn, he won't heal you, but if you draw, stock, and wait a turn, and then cast your own supply of Demi, he will heal you. Uh, also, if you cast Demi on him, it won't hit for a quarter of his HP, but it does do massive amounts of damage. It hits him pretty hard. Uh, my favorite way of beating him, though, is to do what I'm doing now. <laughs> Which is to just cast blind on him. Uh, it takes a few casts to hit, but once he's blinded, you will n he will never be able to hit you with his physical attacks, and therefore he can never ever kill you. Yeah, 1800 for a demi hit. It's pretty good. Just like that, even though we are all perfectly in one hit kill range at this point, he can't touch us because he's blinded. There's pretty good Renzakuken. Yeah. Uh, that is Selfie's Limit Break. It's called Slot. It's pretty shitty, actually. It just gives you a random spell to cast at random enemies a certain number of times. Uh, it doesn't use your stock of magic, but while you're trying to reset it and, you know, mulligan for a better cast, the battle's still going on even with the ATB set to wait. It's not great. Uh, now, Renzakuken, on the other hand, Squall's Limit Break is pretty awesome. It works pretty similarly to the normal Gunblade in that you can pull the trigger to make each hit a critical uh, by hitting R1 as the light passes through the bar down there. Or, I mean, as the light passes through the box on the bar. I've always been terrible with it, though. And that's the Diablo fight. 
You can set Renzakuken to auto, but it will sometimes just miss. Uh, this is also a good time to talk about a really important hidden mechanic that affects Limit Breaks. Uh, the gist of Limit Breaks is that you can usually get to do them at a critical or yellow health. But not always. There's something in the background affecting this called Crisis Level. Uh, crisis Level determines certain conditions for Limit Breaks, like how often you get to do them, how much damage they do, and some other stuff like that. Uh, basically, the higher the Crisis Level, the better. As your health goes further down, closer to zero, your Crisis Level will go up, and spells like Aura uh, will raise it a whole lot. And most status ailments uh, that you suffer can also raise it. Stuff like Blind, Sleep, Doom. Uh, they will also raise your Crisis Level. Let's see. Don't really know what I want to learn next with... Siren. Uh, either move find or summon magic plus 10%. And of course, I definitely want to learn time magic refine with Diablo as soon as possible. That's incredibly useful. So, uh, crisis level, right. It affects different characters' limit breaks in different specific ways. Uh, Squall's Renzakuken, for instance, will hit four times to start. At max crisis level, it will hit a maximum of seven times. And there are a couple of caveats to that. Against a couple of enemies, Renzakuken will hit a set number of times, like it'll always hit seven times versus the uh, final form of the final boss. And there's one more detail about- whoop, wrong NPC. There's one more little detail about Renzakuken. A uh, crisis level will also impact your chance to do a finishing move. So depending on your crisis level, you have anywhere from a 25 to a 90 something percent chance of performing a finishing move at the end of the uh, Renzo. So I think I want to buy 30 tenths, but first I'm going to sell that Colt fan for quite a lot of money. I think it's 30 tenths. That's the magic number. Uh, so with your starting Gunblade, your finisher is always Rough Divide. Later Gunblades that you can upgrade to add a chance to do other finishing moves, which you'll see uh, later in the game. Yeah, you can refine those tents into Kiragas. And 30 tents, I believe, comes out to 300 Kiragas, or basically enough for your entire party at any given time. And Kiraga is one of the best magics you can get at this point in the game to junction for your HP. I think Full Life or Ultima is the, uh, are the two best, but we don't really have easy access to those just yet, but because we have Life Magic refined from Siren, we can refine all those tents into Kiragas and boost the entire party's HP. Uh, but I don't have HP junction on all of them, so for now it's just Squall. But you can see what it huge, crazy difference that makes. Uh, Squall's up to 3,000 HP, and we haven't even gotten to Timber yet. Things are gonna get pretty crazy from here on out. Um, the next thing I'm doing is I'm gonna get Diablo to learn Time Magic Refine, and I'm gonna go hit up uh, Zell's mom's house for Zell's card, and then we are gonna do some more refining and some more junctioning, and really start to get buff. But first, we're gonna pop into the Balam Hotel real quick. Finally found that save point. I forgot where it was in this town. Uh, we're gonna save in case the worst should happen. I should maybe lose a card battle coming up. Uh, we have one more little fit of Triple Triad. And then I will have collected all of the important cards that I really am gunning for. Uh, there's a Cypher card, which you can get from uh, Headmaster Sid back in the garden, which I might go back for at some point, but it's not all that important. I said Cypher, right, and not someone else? Uh, there are a couple of, of rare cards still left to collect around the garden, but Zell's card and Quistus's in particular are pretty important. And you get Zell's card from Zell's mom, who lives over here in Balam. Uh, if you try to go upstairs, I think Zell 
just kicks you out. Yeah, it's sacred. Keep out. How do I trigger? Maybe I have to go in the other room. Uh, I think there's an issue of Timber Maniacs in here. Not? Okay. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Maybe now she'll play me in cards? Yeah, okay. So, again, she can take a while to uh, finally play her son's card. We're gonna stick around and harass this old woman until she does. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, she didn't feel like doing it yet. She also has Biggs and Wedge. Forgot about that. Uh, so... Let's see, I could start off with El Noyle in the top right, which... Seems like as good a move as any. She is also gonna play it safe. Where can I flip him from that won't sacrifice one of my cards? Uh, I could just sack Minimog. He'll get flipped almost definitely. But then, I can play either Diablo or Quistus right above that thing. And it'll be fine. Is that what I want to do? Yeah. Ah, oh, he just flips it back. Whatever. Uh, it's still 5 to 5. And he has nothing to do against that, so... Yeah, I win by default. And... Guess we'll take it El Noyle again. Finally! Just like what happened with the Quistus card that I was trying to get. It's like 40 minutes before this old ass woman finally got mad that I was taking all of her shit. Finally gets mad enough to play her a good card. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty good card though. And it's going. Like, we're gonna get this and just. Burn it in front of her, like, oh, look at this, Zell's mom. <laughs> We're burning your son in effigy. Oh. Again, like, I, I'm always just tempted to sack Minimog because he's so weak from either side. <laughs> Instead of playing him later when it would be safe. I don't know. This is weird. Feels like every move is just mediocre there. Then again, this lets me... Oh, you know what? I can flip two at once this way. Yeah. That worked out better than I thought. If I was perfectly willing to let him be the sacrificial lamb there. Can't flip him back, but... I'm pretty sure as long as I play Quistus there, I win. Yeah. A win is a win is a win. We get Zell's card. Zell's mom cries herself to sleep. <laughs> And we are out. We're done here in Balamb. Now I'm gonna do some off-screen grinding just to get Diablo Time Magic refined. And when we come back next time, we will get on with our mission to Timber with some newly buffed up characters. Thanks for watching everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.